Now, let's get a better understanding of the user interface so you can understand what you're seeing on the screen, since it could look pretty menacing at first. So, let's start with this little plus button. This is how you add your virtual instrument or audio tracks to the timeline. Choose your desired sound and it will add it to the timeline where you can begin recording your instrument through MIDI or in the case of a microphone or physical instrument, your audio track options. You can adjust multiple options on this little thing here called the track header. This contains some audio information for your selected instrument. You can choose to isolate or mute the instrument as well as adjusting the volume and stereo pan. Keep in mind that you can add multiple tracks so you can have as many instruments as you want to make your songs really pop. Adjacent to this, you have probably what is one of the most important sections, the timeline. You can drag and drop your recorded or looped tracks. After dropping the track in the timeline, you can trim the length of it as well as copy and paste it over to another track. This is done with this little marker towards the left that you can move to any point in the timeline. When you place the marker down, pasting or recording a track will place it wherever that marker is. You can also use it to listen to specific parts of your song by placing it where this section is. Also, the little arrow towards the right lets you zoom the timeline in and out. Now, the majority of these UI options are at the very top, so let's go over some of the essentials. This bar here contains all of the transport controls. You can buffer through the song with the left and right arrows, stop, pause, and play the song, or record the entirety of the song, including all of the tracks you've placed. The far right option lets you choose how you want your timeline to play back. Clicking it will make this little rectangle appear above the timeline. You can adjust where you want to put it by placing it at the desired point in the song and adjusting the length by dragging it forward or backwards, like so. If you hit play, the song will only play what's underneath that little yellow bar. Click it again if you want to turn it off. I also want to add that if you click on it once more, the yellow bar will appear where you last put it automatically. The bar is basically a timer, showing you how many times the key signature has been reset. The beats shows you how many times your time signature has been satisfied. With a standard 4-4 time sig, it'll play four beats and then reset afterwards. This is mostly a visual effect to keep track of how many bars and beats your song contains, as in, it doesn't directly affect the song. Hitting this little arrow in the box, you have the option to show the total time of the song instead of the tempo or key instrument. The volume slider right next to it allows you to change the volume of the entire song. Pretty self-explanatory. Next up is the metronome. This is basically an audio indicator that helps you keep the beat. For example, if you're trying to make a piano riff go along with the tempo of your song, a metronome will help you keep up the pace. Finally, on the far right, we have loops. Loops are pre-made audio tracks based on various instruments and genres that you can place on your timeline at any time. So you can make tracks out of just loops, just audio tracks, or a little bit of both. Loops are very good for newbies that haven't quite mastered melody creation yet. That's it for software tracks. Next up, we have audio tracks and drummer tracks, so let's just start with audio. Audio is really not that much different from software tracks. First, you make sure the audio is being recorded from your preferred device, like a microphone or straight from the computer, and then you start recording. Almost all the user interface from the software tracks carries over to the audio, so you can trim your audio, you can mix it, and all that jazz. Next, we have a drummer track. A drummer track, just like the audio, has a very similar UI. These are basically pre-made drum sets that can be slightly altered depending on how you want it. They're all sorted by the drummers and their names, so Anders will have a heavier one, Jesse will have a funkier one, it all depends on what you want. You can also edit the loudness, complexity, the amount of cymbals or hi-hats, and vice versa, so you can make it wholly yours. So now that we know what we're doing on our screen, nothing left to do besides make our song.